Jeff, tell me what you know about ninjas. Uh, they like to wear masks over their faces. They okay. throw stars. All right. Sometimes they have a sword. Okay. Uh, and when they disappear, there's often a puff of smoke left that's, behind. That <laughs> sounds like a pretty good ninja primer, but I could use a little more. Uh, luckily, we have Nels Anderson from Clay Entertainment. How are you yeah, doing, sir? I am very well. How are you guys? Uh, good. good. We're, we're looking at Mark of the Ninja here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping you can maybe tell me a little more than Jeff about... <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? What's going what on here? What else is there? Well, no, that was actually kind of the thing. Because um, we wanted to do you know, a game about ninjas. We want to make a stealth game, right? And as a, like a, a fictional construct or whatever, like Ninja affords, you know, being sneaky, quiet, fast, clever, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, as, as a pop culture icon, whatever, ninjas aren't that, right? Like, especially in games, there was, right. you know, there's Tenchu 14 yeah, yeah. freaking years ago, right. which itself, yikes. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, like any stuff that involves a ninja is like all the balls to all the walls. Super yeah. over the top. It's like, like running on walls, it's, it's, it becomes more yeah. character action combo yeah. crazy. Yeah. Right, and that's cool. I mean, game. you can make great games like that, yeah. but it's like, but let's not really the richest thing we can do with this, right? So it's like, okay, well, let's make a game about a ninja. It's actually about being ninja-like, right? All right. Being yeah. sneaky and fast, and but still clever, and you know, maintaining that good stealth dynamic between like power and weakness, right? Because that's mm. that's kind of where Look, stealth games sing, where you know. You have all these strengths, all these vulnerabilities. Um, of course, like we're not going to completely issue all that good ninja stuff. So there's yeah. all kinds of ninja st items in the game. Okay. Um, this one, like obviously there is some of the stuff like you'd expect, like your smoke bombs and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, there's also some stuff we we brewed up our own selves. Um, even then, like a lot of this stuff was. I mean, so again, coming back to that problem where almost all ninja pop culture stuff is totally cornball and ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it ended up being that we actually looked a lot more about at actual Japanese history for influences. Oh shit, that guy totally saw the trap. But I can actually use it to distract him and kill him instead. <laughs> um, yeah, we ended up actually, oh yeah, and I'll go and drag him and hide him in this dumpster here. Cause that's what you do. That's what you can that's do. What you do. In stealth games, that's what you do when you're a ninja. You hide bodies. Yep. You stay out of the light. Yep. For uh, <laughs> actually, but I will do, I'll do it actually on this guy. So actually, um, one of the things we wanted to really, really focus on in this game is the readability of all those core stealth systems. Because um, I like stealth games a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. But I was talking to Patrick Klepek about, about this game at PAX East, and he said, well, normally I really don't like stealth games. Mm -hmm. But I like this. And I get how stealth games can be kind of inaccessible for some folks, because... They can be pretty rote, you know? Exactly. Well, a they lot can, of memorization. Yes, and, and they can be a bit rote. Error. Yep, and also, like, a lot of those core stealth systems, they're pretty opaque. Yeah, right, right, where it's like, if I make a noise, is this guy going to hear me? Right, right. I don't know. Like, I how far I... can this guy actually see? You know, yeah, can he exactly. See me over here or not? And also, just even you know, in three D games and stuff like that, just you know, the the nature of the environment means that it can be trickier to yeah, sure. figure that stuff out in, yeah. in a three D space. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of were able to leverage that two D stuff because it is a little more abstract anyway. Mm -hmm. We can include elements where anything that involves noise in the game. Um, we visualize it. So as I'm aiming at this item right here, you see that big blue ring that's kind of cascading outward? Yeah. That's how far the noise that's made oh, wow. before I attack. So before you even attack this thing, you know what the consequences and reaction of it are going to be. Okay. So you're like, okay, well, I want to get this guy to move in this direction so I can hit this. But if I were to break this light, you can see the radius doesn't overlap with him. Mm. So he won't notice, he won't hear that sound. But if I hit this thing, he will because he's like, huh, what the hell is that? Because I put this trap down over here, He's gonna head over and oh, <laughs> poor guy! Should have thought that through better. Um, and you, it's, it's the same thing with uh, oh well, oh, oh, poor rats. And it's the same thing with the um, with the with the light and darkness, right? So you can see right here, I'm all in black. There's the white outline, just the red highlights. But when I move over here, his palette completely changes. Okay. So mm -hmm. you can see the colors on his coffee. It's kind of like an immediate visual cue. Exactly. So rather than having like you know a light gem or some other kind of exogenous HUD element, it's just like well, let's just make it. The thing you're looking at right. always, which is the character. Right. Let's just have him you know, present that information. Cool. So, so the game doesn't end up being about like kind of having to figure out that black box and just kind of like you know pushing the levers and the, hitting the buttons and stuff. But rather, just all those core stealth things are are tools at your disposal. Right. Mm -hmm. So you understand how these systems work and you can use them to manipulate right. guys kind of. Yeah, at your it, discretion. Se it seems, seems like you'd be able to snap that stuff off maybe a little more immediately. Uh, or play the game a little more dy dynamically than having to sit there and stare at a light meter and stuff like that. Yes, yes, exactly. Because so. that's kind of where uh, stealth games, for me, are the most interesting, is when you have that really 
intentional play where you kind of understand, These okay, I, you know, if I do this, these These guys are going to react in this way, that guy's going to react in that way, so you can be a bit more deliberate and you can be a bit more expressive, right? Right. Um, I mean, it seems that uh, this is kind of the anger that the Harvey and Raph and the rest of the guys at Arcane are doing with Dishonored as well. I mean, I think in our influences are kind of similar in that regard. I think the, the place where stealth games often break down for me is kind of once you go off script, when everything goes to shit, uh, a lot of time there's no recoverability, you know? Right. Like, like it's just, you might as well just die yeah, and or just, you go know, back to the checkpoint, so. Hit, hit a retry button, go right. back to the last, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. does, does, do you feel like in this you can be a little more dynamic and, and sort of yeah, play, um, play immediately when you're, when, you know, when your plan goes wrong? Are you still able to kind of save your ass? Yeah, that's sort of the idea is because a lot of, because it is, it's a game in 2D, right? So, it's not that you can hide around a corner from any enemies. So, rather, a lot of the stealth just comes from your maneuverability. Like, you can see I was climbing around on the ceiling right there and all that good stuff. So, it ends up being like, when things go wrong, it's pretty easy to recover just using those same core traversal mechanics. So, oh shit, a guy saw me, but I can boot up to this grappling hook point and then climb on the wall and break line of sight. Do all that kind of stuff. So if I flip out, just kind of look up there. Again, going back to that notion of clarity, like whenever there's that little orange circle, that's where a guy saw or heard something that was strange. Okay. Oh shit, okay. Okay. saw me. Um, the other thing is, like, if you are caught, so if you can kind of get just you and a guy alone, you can generally take him out without too much trouble, um, as long as you're quick and, you know, relatively responsive. It's when there's kind of more than one guy at once. If you get caught, that's when things tend to go south pretty darn quickly. Um, now, the game is level-based. There aren't, it's not like a fully connected open world Metroidvania thing. Um, It's kind of more like the original Thief in that regard, where there's like, there are discrete levels, but inside the levels, there's a lot of different paths and opportunities, stuff you can explore and find. So that, every level has three of those hidden scrolls, which kind of tell the backstory of the clan in kind of an audio log-esque way, I guess. Um, You can see there's kind of like three down there at the Mm, bottom. Um, It's just kind of like an interesting uh, exploration thing, (laughs) except um, all those scrolls are done entirely in haiku. (laughs) Um, Because it's it's kind of a different thing that's, you know, tonally, aesthetically appropriate. It's it's, it's consistent. Yeah, and actually uh, a writer... Give the writer something to shoot for. Right. (laughs) A writer was actually uh, Chris Dolan. Do you guys know Chris? His name name sounds Um, familiar. Yeah, he started Kill Screen Magazine along with... Uh, Jamin, yeah. um, but he wanted to—you know—he's been doing games writing and music journalism stuff for years and years and years. But he wanted to jump onto this side of the fence, and he—it was so awesome working with him. And we, like, obviously, we had him integrated throughout the whole process. It wasn't like at the eleventh hour, oh, we need a story. Yeah, if you just cram in some ninja magic right. around the, the periphery of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Say yeah. something about a lotus, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we very, very much wanted to do not that. <laughs> So we had Chris involved the whole time, but when he when he said he was interested, we talked about the project. He said he was interested. I don't think he realized he would be needing to write a mountain of Japanese poetry. <laughs> there are a couple times we talking over email where he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go take a walk in the woods and you know work on the the the." the haikus for World 3, I'm like, well, that's, that's very Whitman of you. Go, go hang out at a bamboo garden for a little while. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, do you kind of gate the abilities that you have access to? Like, are, is there an upgrade tree? There or is, there is, yeah. Work? There's actually, um, in just a little bit, I will run to the spot where we can see that. But the game definitely has a lot going on, and the we didn't want to have, like, to you to be able to, you know, understand so, so, so much right at the beginning. Um, so there definitely is kind of a, a notion of upgrades and all that. Um, but it, it still comes back to that notion of player choice. Like, there aren't any giant decisions where it's like, oh, as soon as you commit to being a stealth-type character, that's all you got for the rest of the game. Like, all of these, all of the kind of upgrade decisions you choose, it's not like a big old ugly tree where once you commit to this, that's sort of it. Um, it's about affording people different things they want to do with their play style. And that's, that's kind of at its, at its you know, most basic level, that's sort of what the game is about. It's, you know, here are, the, here are the tools you have at your disposal, and that includes, you know, your understanding of the game's stealth systems, and then just approach this encounter in a way you find interesting or challenging or whatever. And we tried to make it so that kind of all the elements in the game would play to that. So I don't have it equipped right now. Yeah, I don't have it, but um, the smoke bomb items in the game, of course, they can, like, cover up and escape, they can be used to temporarily like disable enemies by blinding them, but they can also kind of block these lasers temporarily. Uh-huh. So the idea was like, any any element you have in the game is going to have multiple purposes. It's not just kind of this one-to-one, find the right key for the right lock approach. And we did set the game kind of intentionally in the modern era. Um, 
on the one hand, just so you know, it didn't seem like the game was Tenchu, but in two D. Uh, but also, you can just do a bit more in a modern era. Like you have, like you can do things like oh, crazy laser traps sure, and stuff yeah, like that. Versus, yeah. there's a guy with a torch, and then there's another guy with a torch. And there's a big samurai right, right. with it. Ancient, ancient Japan a little short on yeah, laser, yeah. laser tripwires. Seems like the sort of thing that would end up giving you a lot of enemy variety in terms of just like, mm -hmm. these guys have rifles. They're real bad. Right. You don't <laughs> want them to see you. Well, that was actually an interesting thing we encountered design-wise. Oh, here, I'll talk about the upgrades real quick. Um, so there's all the upgrades. And again, because I kind of jumped to this later level debug-wise, the stuff isn't unlocked. But the techniques are all things related to like uh, the stealth kills and the combat. Um, and a couple, uh, like, abilities that are always active on you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to be, okay, I'm going to be the guy that stealth kills everybody in as many different ways as possible, you might want to grab those things first. There are the distraction items, which are more about, like, manipulating the enemies. Um, the smoke bombs live in there. And then there's the attack stuff, which is interacting with the enemies a bit more directly. But again, they still have multiple purposes. So kind of even like you saw at the beginning, when I dropped a spike mine, when I hit it, when it was a little too close to the guy, he heard it. That's a thing I can use to, per, say, move him out of the way. So right. I want him somewhere else. So I can do that. Um, and then uh, on, on a kind of similar vein, um, we also have this notion of styles where every level has three optional objectives. And again, they're totally optional objectives. That's kind of how we got the difficulty in the game. Mm. It wasn't, we didn't want it to be like easy, medium, hard because there aren't really numbers you can tune, right? When the way you interact with guys is stealth killing them or not, it's all like, that guy's right, got 200% yeah. more hit points. What does that mean? Um, so rather, every level is three kind of optional objectives. And of those, two are kind of themed toward a particular play style. It just kind of encourages you to experiment with systems, different systems and mechanics like you, you might not normally just kind of play through the game straight. Um, and then every time you finish one of those seals, it unlocks one third of one of these styles. So when you finish three steals, three seals of a particular type, so like here's combat, uh, aggression, stealth, and terror. When you finish all three, you unlock one of these styles, which again is just an optional loadout choice. But it kind of can dramatically change the way you approach the game. Hmm. So if you really, really uh, want to be a stealth character, uh, so for example, you can actually get through the entire game without killing anybody. Um, oh. and so if you want to commit to that type of play, uh, the stealth style, it actually, it makes it so all your footsteps are totally silent, where obviously normally you can see they're making quite a bit of noise. Um, you can carry more of those distraction items, but you don't have a sword at all. So you can't stealth kill anybody. Oh, wow. So if you really, really want to commit to playing in that fashion, you can totally do that. Wow, okay. Um, or if you want to be all about stealth kills, or if you want to be about terrorizing enemies, right. whatever. But, but you, it sounds like you have to, you have to make some pretty hard trade-offs. Yes, exactly. There. Oh, damn it, I, I, I flew too close to the sun on that one. So all the the, uh, the abilities and gear and stuff you're unlocking, it looked like was using a, a certain currency? Is yes. that right? So, but yeah. is that different from these the, the, the points that keep popping up when you do stuff? Uh, kind or, of. Or are those things related? They are related. So okay. uh, the breakdown here is that every level has a maximum of nine of those kind of upgrade points. That's how you like 100% level, so to speak. Um, Three of them come out of, you can oh, see there's from, like three score ranking, just point score. rankings, okay. exactly. And then the three optional objectives, and then the three hidden scrolls. Okay, so there's a lot of different yeah. stuff to do in each level. To, exactly. So build, um, build your guy up. Right, but the point was still to make all that stuff kind of opt-in difficulty versus like these very hard gates. So if folks just want to kind of play through the game without really emphasizing any particular thing, that's all totally valid. But if you want to if you want to dig a bit deeper, you can do that too. Okay. Yeah. And then, so coming back, kind of that notion of, so there's this this notion that I don't know if this is canonical terminology or whatever, um, but I just think of it as like a gulf of execution. So in some games, there can be a bit of like a like a bit of conflict between what people know they want to be able to do and what their character could reasonably be able to do, and just based on their fluency with the game's controls, right. what they can actually do. Mm -hmm. um, so something like, let's see, a good spot I can demonstrate in here maybe. So something like, you know, if you were dropping in midair okay. and aiming at a light or whatever, like, if you'd spend enough time with the game, you could probably get good enough to be able to do that. But it would take a lot, a lot, a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of the, the, the way the power dynamic in stealth games works, it tends to say, well, you should be careful because the penalties for making a mistake are generally pretty pretty harsh, right? right? So it's kind of like the game says, hey, don't take a lot of risks, be careful. But then to get that level of fluency with the controls, you kind of need to take a lot of risks just so you can yeah. get that familiarity. So, oh man, those guys almost saw me. Um, so instead, we did things like where whenever you aim, you can see the whole game 
completely pauses. Right. Yeah, I was, gonna, I, was, I was curious earlier. I was wondering if that's time limited or can you just nope, sit here as long as you want? you can just do it forever. Okay. Because the game isn't marching forward, so it's not like right. you really have any kind of advantage. You can't do anything in this mode aside from aim. There's no like, there's no, like time freeze meter running down. Yeah, no, initially we had that, right? And it just ended up being like, oh, this is really lame and makes people not want to use this ability. And it's like, well, then why have we put it in there at all? So, right. like, yeah. again, continuing with that theme of, you know, really enabling people and right. letting them play the way they want. It's like, let's just put that in there. Um, and so you can you can mark potentially mark multiple targets um, and queue up like throwing a different weapon. You can com kind of combine that stuff all together. So you can do some pretty crazy things. Let's see if I can grab that guy's launch with me. And then just go right behind that guy. And so like someone could probably do that if they'd spent just a ton, ton of ton of time with the game, but it's like, let's just let people Play sure. that way yeah. straight out of the game. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody's going to be able to spend that time. Right. And certainly some, some games, like, that's what they're about, and they're super interesting and super great that way. But we just kind of wanted the interesting parts of this game to not really be about that super, super high level of fluency with the controls. And, and make rather, it something that, you know, like, if people want to puzzle it out, they yeah. don't necessarily need to be super active on the controllers. Right. You know, yeah, like, exactly. like, like anyone, anyone can kind of get that stuff out. That's yeah. cool. And it's definitely not about, you know, Oh crap! The dog saw me. Smell me. Whatever. Um, yeah, and it's not it, like certainly we didn't put that in to make the game easy. Like the game definitely isn't easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just, just a, it's a different kind of hard. Exactly. You know, the difficulty not, falls out of you know. It's not based on you know muscle memory and right. manual dexterity so much as kind of problem solving skills. Yes. Yes. Exactly that. Because you're you're abstracting the mechanics out enough that it's kind of a, a puzzle game in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, man. oh no! God! This this chunk of the level is really. <laughs> How deep into the game is this? Uh, this is, is technically the fourth level. Okay. Um, mm. So it's maybe about a third of the way through. Um, we actually, the game ended up being pretty long. <laughs> um, not like really? overlong. Yeah. I, I find definitely all things, you know, when I think games should be of an appropriate length. Mm -hmm. And I, I sometimes yeah. find like this weird calculus of cost divided by hours yeah. spent yeah, makes a game that, better. That, that it's a as a reviewer, you end up hearing a lot of that from the audience sometimes, when people just go like, "I just want to know how long it is." Right. Like, how many hours am I getting for? It? Right. Like, there's, there's like, there's like a, 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 a an absolute attitude of more is better. Yeah. Right. But I, I feel like that attitude is is not as prevalent as it was yeah. ten years ago, or something right. like that, yes. where everyone yes. just wanted to know the number. Right. right. Uh, now it's you know we're, we're able to get away from that a lot more, which I think is good. Yes, I, I completely agree. In general, like I like a thing that's just as long as it needs to be. Right. And sure. it just happened to be that this game kind of ended up being a little bit longer. Is all. Cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's more like more than anything else, it's kind of how people approach the game. Like we've had some people run through, like we play tested this game a ton, a ton, a ton, more than anything we've ever done in the past ever by like an order of magnitude. Um, and some people would get through like that first introductory level in like 15 minutes, they'd really enjoy it. Other people, it took them an hour. And it wasn't mm. because they were dying over and over again. They were really engaged, really enjoying it. It was just like their play style, they just kind of approached it at a slower pace. Mm -hmm. right. So when someone asks me, oh, how long is the game? I'm like, well, I don't know. It's, <laughs> like, it's like it could vary by a factor right. of four in either yeah. direction, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, whenever you finish the level, you kind of get this, this tally of how everything is set up. And I very, very, very much wanted it so that kind of the, the, the way the game evaluates success, obviously, whether we want it to do this or not, you know, when you're giving people points, you're saying, you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and as you saw, you get points for stealth killing the bad guys. But we didn't want that to be the, like, the dominant way that you actually succeed in playing the game, because then people who choose to do the ghosting, nonviolent thing, they kind of get penalized, right. either actively or passively, right. it's the yeah, perception, yeah. right? So we're like, okay, well, if you stealth kill a dude, you get points for it. But at the end of the level, for every guy you got past without them detecting you, you get an equivalent amount of points. So okay. it's sort of yeah. for the level scoring tiers, it's like, again, just approach it in whatever way you find interesting. Mm. And that's how you can choose to come at it. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of rounds up with, you know, three scrolls, three optional objectives, the three points, and then four of nine of those kind of upgrade currency things. Cool. Um, yeah, and that's that's one level of the game. Oh, this is the upsell video. But maybe <laughs> folks will want to check it out. Sell us. That's right. <laughs> Look at all that sweet stuff. Oh man, so sneaky. So how do you handle um, you know, like like big end of level type moments or <laughs> something like that? I mean, you know, like a boss fight might not yes. fit with the design. Yes, as, as certainly some folks have seen in the past, uh, games that are about being sneaky don't really facilitate traditional boss fights right. very well. Um, 
So oh, you got to stealth kill this guy three times. To right. Down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing is that like the game doesn't have anything supernatural in it. Like, there's no ninja right. magic. There's no you know crazy mojo or anything. So it's like, well, your opponents are people, and you're this insanely well trained ninja with a giant sword. It's like, well, if you stab them, they will perish. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. how that works. Um, so it ended up being a bit more about like set pieces and kind of more complicated encounters. Just more intricate level yeah, design. Rather than like, like here's a cool. dude with a giant health bar. Um, and again, right. that, that could work perfectly well for certain types of games, sure, but it doesn't totally. not, it wasn't appropriate yes. for this, right? Um, yeah, and then again, even though this kind of has like the three figures, it's not, there aren't like three specific paths you choose. It's just about, you know, those are kind of at a super high level, three possible ways you could approach it. So these are all potentially your guy? Yes. So yes. I can be crazy demon mask ninja yep. guy. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, cool. the, uh, when can I do that, Nels? Yes. When you've unlocked three of those uh, terror type optional objectives, uh, that's when you get the the crazy path of nightmares outfit. Sweet. That uh, makes things awesome. Yep. And everyone good. will be able to be this crazy, terrifying ninja if they so desire on September seventh. Dude, don't even have Xbox to ask. Live Arcade. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> yeah. Nice like work. A boss nice. Or Damn. Something. Son. I thought that's what you were asking. That was, that was <laughs> impressive. So, uh, and you guys are uh, Xbox only exclusive. Uh, right? For now, um, okay. we would definitely like to do a PC version at some point Great. in the not too distant future. Okay. But we're still sussing out all the details sure. for that. So, sure. but so XBLA yes. September seventh. Yep. Awesome. Exactly. Well, this is looking great. Awesome. Uh, appreciate you coming by. Yeah, thanks yeah, for coming of by. Course. Looks cool. Pleasure, pleasure, gentlemen. All right.